Uh, thanks, Sam, for tuning in to Sam's workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So today we are going to be talking about the Davenports by Crystal Marquis. So this is a historical fiction. Um, it takes place in Chicago in 1910, and it follows four different young women. You have Olivia and Helen, who are sisters, Ruby, who is Olivia's best friend, and Amy Rose, who is, um, I guess, kind of a servant in the Davenport household. These girls all have one thing in common. They are all African American. Um, so Olivia and Helen, their father escaped to the north. You know, he escaped slavery to the north. And he opened up his own carriage company. And now he's like filthy rich, right? He has made a name for himself. He is a staple in Chicago society. Amy Rose, um, she's biracial and not a lot of people wanted the daughter of a white man to be in their households. But the Davenports, you know, they took her in and they gave her a home, you know, her and her mother, they gave them a home. And then you have Ruby. Now her father is running for senator and they used to be really rich. And now they're almost dirt poor. So her family expects her to marry wealthy. In fact, they want her to marry John, um, the eldest Davenport son. What I really liked about the story was, ironically enough, um, the romance. <laughs> I swear, I'm still the same person. <laughs> I liked it because it really did add to the characters, the characterization, for its matter, and the character development. You know, these are four girls, and not only are they limited by the color of their skin, but they are also limited by their gender. You know, Olivia is thought, people in the civil rights movement think a little less of her because she's black, she's wealthy, she goes and buys all these frilly, frilly things, except that's just her on a supervision superficial level. Once you take the time to know her, civil rights matters to her because her father, you know, he still has his scars um, from slavery, both emotional and physical. And what she wants to do is make sure that we don't go back to that point. So she starts joining in and becoming more active in the civil rights movement, even though her family wants her to just stay out of it. They're just like, you know, it's done. We would just want to move on. And it's just like, she doesn't want to move on. She wants people to remember that this is a thing that happened. We cannot let it happen again. And any racism is just opening the doorway, you know? I don't know if I'm saying that clear enough. Probably not. She wants people to understand. And she wants to make sure that past atrocities are not repeated, which is why she joins the civil rights movement. She wants more equality, you know. The book opens up, she's shopping for um, ribbon to go on a dress, and a white worker girl, who clearly doesn't know who she is, acts racist towards her because of her skin. She's like, oh, you can't afford that. You know, that kind of cliche scene that we see play out um, in, in movies and TV. It's just like, oh, clearly you can't afford that because of the color of your skin. Um... She is one of the richest people in this city. So check yourself, please. <laughs> she experiences racism all the time. Like her wealth doesn't protect her from it. So she wants to use her wealth and her name and her, um, her status to fight for the rights of others. And I really did like that because it was the romance that really opened her up to that. As for Helen, you know, she wants to be a mechanic. Everyone's moving away from carriages, horse-drawn carriages. They want to go to motor cars. She wants to be in that. She's a mechanic. She's brilliant. And again, it's the romance that allows her to really stay true to herself instead of being the proper primper little girl that her family wants her to be. They just want her to dress in Philly things, stay out of it, just be a proper lady. Except she's not a proper lady. She's a brilliant engineer. She's a brilliant mechanic. And I do love that the romance kind of challenges her and allows her to be true to herself. Even if it does end in some heartbreak. She is allowed to be true to herself. 
Amy Rose. She turned, she wants to have her own salon and the romance there pushes her, you know, it pushes her to take those chances. Even if it means taking that her away from home, it pushes her to really grab on to those opportunities that will allow her to be a big name when it comes to black hairstyling and black hair care because that's what she wants and I think that that's incredible I'm Amy Rose is my favorite she was my favorite character by far in this book I absolutely love her entrepreneurial spirit I loved how she just is kind of like go-getter um she is to me one of my favorites I mean yes Olivia was great too but Amy Rose was just brilliant to me I loved her and then you have Ruby her family again wants her to just marry rich she doesn't want that. She wants to marry for love, even if it means she's going to be poor. She doesn't care. You know, she'd rather be happy and poor than unhappy with wealth. Like, why are you... She doesn't want that. So she really does grow as a character. I will say, when the story started, Ruby was kind of my least favorite character. I understood the pressure she was feeling from her family, but it didn't really make her likable until she met her romance. I was just like, okay, here we go. Let's do this thing. I will say, Marquis did an excellent job capturing the historical atmosphere. She did an excellent job capturing Chicago in the 1910s, um, you know. I thought it was brilliantly done, and I love the character development. I love the characterization and how the characters grow and continue to grow up until the end. And I love how fluid the writing is, you know. It switches between four different perspectives but it doesn't lose the reader at all it's very the pacing is maintained it's very smooth it moves very steadily while also being engaging and highlighting a lot of events that did happen in history um we should not forget history at all so i really did think it was really captivating i'm excited to see where the second book is no title yet for it Nothing released yet, but I'm excited. Uh, I think Crystal Marquis did a brilliant job with the storytelling, and I am I am here for it. <laughs> Absolutely love this book. Absolutely love the characterization. Love the plot. Love the storytelling. Everything about it was pretty outstanding. So I'm going to give this book four and a half out of five stars. Um, if you want to go ahead and purchase the book, I will include links in the description below on where to purchase and on that note, I hope you all continue to support me here by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. You can also become a supporter on Buy Me Coffee, Kofi Patreon, by purchasing one of my handmade candles, or by following any of my social media platforms. Links to everything will be in the description below. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading!